Okay, so this is the Peak Meter PM5203 digital insulation tester. It's a relatively basic insulation tester, uh, 50 to 1000 volts uh, with AC volts, DC volts, and a continuity and resistance range quite low, only up to around about 200 ohms on the resistance range. It's got a little bit of functionality to it as well, uh, which has got 19 memory slots available to it. It's also got star and pi uh, timer function for the insulation test. Um, it records min, max values and averaging uh, and that's the, pretty much the basic functionality of the unit itself. Now I believe this instrument is actually a clone of the MS5203 from Mastec um, and that seems to be quite a heavily cloned instrument. Um, it's available from a number of different sources. This particular peak meter unit that's available on Amazon for around about 90 to 120 pounds. There's also slightly different versions of this available from Amazon as well from other different manufacturers, but they're all labeled up as the PM5203. Uh, the actual Mastec unit itself, not so easily available in the UK. You can get it from mainland Europe um, and you can get it from China, obviously. That to me is somewhere between 140 to 160 pounds generally. Down at the very bottom end of the scale, there's a unit from B-side, the AMO1, which again I believe is a copy of this. Uh, you get that for somewhere between 80 to 90 pounds in the UK. And then at the upper end of the scale, there's also a version of this from Test Instrument Solutions, the TIS1835, and that's available from CEF and other electrical factors throughout the UK and you'll pay anything from 200 to 300 pounds for that. But I believe it's still exactly the same unit as this PM5203. Now the only slight difference there may be with that, Mastec also make an MS5203A that has a 250 milliamp earth bond test on the unit to be compliant with IEC regulations. It could be that some of those other units are actually clones of that 5203A and have a, a higher test current on the continuity function, whereas this is only a one milliamp test current on this one, so it's not IEC compliant for earth bond tests. So this particular unit, the PM52038, comes boxed, a bit of a bashed about box, but box nonetheless. You do get a case with it, uh, quite a roomy case. Um, inside, you can see the meter uh, pretty much sits uh, a fair bit of room around it in there. Got a pocket there for the leads, and you also get strap here as well for the case to go on the side buckles here um, and you can also uh, put it around the meter here as well if you want to. Uh, what else in the meter you get a little instruction manual for it which is actually not too badly written. Um, fairly good for uh, the basic layout of it, functions, uh, pass fails, tells you all the functions there and all the alarms that you can get up there, uh, what to expect on the displays, there's your dial and your pie there, so yeah pretty, uh, pretty comprehensive, not too bad a manual at all. You also get red on a black crop clip there, um, reasonable sized, if I get my terminal rail, put that to task again, um, you can see Quite easily goes around the M12 nut there. Uh, studs dead easy. Uh, you get these probes with it, set of probes. These are silicon insulated, so fairly reasonable quality. Um, but they are quite a uh, thick cover, GS38 cover on the uh, probe tip there. So you, know, you can get them in the large terminals and these small terminals. Uh, there's got no chance of getting them in there. Uh, the 6mm as well doesn't go. If you just bear with me, try and... Um, so the caps uh, are very, very tight, very awkward to get off and you end up having to pry them off with a bar or something. Uh, ridiculously tight, really. And obviously what you actually end up with is this kind of arrangement with it stuck on the end of the probe like that, which is a little bit cheap and not so nice. Uh, they still go around there. They can become a bit uh, bit heavy and a bit cumbersome in that kind of manner as opposed to having the probe where this will just unplug off a 4mm and 
plug this one in its place, which is what I much prefer. And we'll put the cover back on now. We've chewed it all up. And that's pretty much what you get with the kit. Um, in terms of its performance, the insulation test function, we've got 50 volts that can go up to 50 mega ohms, 100 volts that goes up to 100 mega ohms, 250 volts that goes up to 250 mega ohms, 500 volts that goes up to 500 mega ohms, and the final range is 1000 volts, which actually goes up to 10 giga ohms. So a fair bit of range on the 1000 volt, but soon drops off at the lower test voltages. With regards to dial and pi, I tested on my motor winding simulator. Um, the dial was 1.63, which matches the model, and the polarization index was 7.59, which uh, that's against 7.76, should be the actual value. Um, so pretty close, um, not too bad at all there, really. Um, what else do we have? So, overall accuracy of the unit for insulation testing came in at minus 0.357% testing it over the whole of its range which is very similar it's kind of the second half of the instruments that I've tested and it's a similar sort of accuracy to that seen on the Sonal MIC30 or the UNI-T UT505A insulation multimeter. One milliamp load test current uh, that has a 70.9 microamp spread so again quite high sort of sits in the bottom quartile really and when I actually tested it on some of the ranges 50 volt, 100 volt and 1000 volt the current was slightly below the 1 milliamp not anything that you'd be too concerned about but technically speaking that is out of spec uh, already mentioned continuity test and DC ohms uh, that's 10 milli ohms to 200 ohms uh, but as I say it's only 1 milliamp test current uh, AC volts will read up to 750 and DC volts will read up to 1000 so with regards to construction of the unit oh, it's, it's a hard plastic case um, that's surrounded by this rubber moulding we've got here that is removable um, fairly easily he says So that becomes removable. You have tilt stand at the back here uh, so the unit can stand up and all your connections uh, are on the top here. So the insulation test is between low and high and your actual then voltage measurements are made between high and common. So you have to swap the leads between insulation testing and voltage measurement there. Battery pack is six double A's. These screws are not captivated, um, so when you pull the lid off, you can lose them if you're not careful. Um, you have rubber foam in the battery compartment lid there to keep batteries in place. As I said, six AAs there. I do have brass inserts for the actual battery cover, which is very nice. And then we'll just drop this cover off purely and simply because then I will be able to show you that this unit is a Mastec clone. Just four screws that hold everything together. Always one that uh, doesn't want to play, isn't there? And, oh, there he is. So that's the inside of the board there. Can't hopefully show you. Uh, this side of the board is not too bad. Fairly clean. Battery connection is pluggable and removable there. Um, Unfortunately, these leads that go to the input jacks, which you can't see, so the leads here that go to the input jacks, they are not pluggable, they are hard soldered on, and all your input protection is on this side of the board here. Looks like you've got some PTCs in there. Uh, I've not seen any MOVs, uh, so possibly not. Um, a little 
high voltage transformer there, driven by thyristor down there, and there's your main processor at the top up there. And then, if you bear with me, whilst I take out this front cover, make a right mess of this, am I? And you can see then, get him out of the way. If I bring him, and there, there's the other side of the main board. You can see a little bit of solder flux around some of the connections, the solder joints here and up here. You can see you've got your standard carbon function switches onto the PCB track. And then down here, in the bottom corner here, it says MS5203-1, which is the Mastec MS5203. Um, so definitely a clone of that instrument. Um, as I say, I've just bought this just to play around with, take some measurements of internally. Um, cheap little instrument if I happen to break it. Whilst messing around with it, it's not too much of an issue for me. Okay, so that's pretty much it, a quick review of this instrument. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you again in another video.